This is Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. It's uh, May the 23rd. This is the Reach Out uh, Ministry, and we're going to talk about how we are sealed with God once we believe upon him. We're going to turn in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and start in verse 15. He says, Wherefore I also, after that I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and loved unto all your saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, gave unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the un knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know that is in the hope of your calling and what riches of the glory of his inheritance with the saints and what is exceedingly greatness in his power to usward to believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Jesus and raised him from the dead and set him on the right hand of heavenly places. Uh, we know that uh, the good Lord, he loves us, he cares for us, and he tells us here that our knowledge and our prayer uh, is that they have known Christ as their personal Savior. And by knowing him, he sits at the right-hand throne of God in heavenly places, and he makes intercession for you and I. Also in this same chapter, let's go back up in verse 11 and read 11 through 14. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. Now, predestination, uh, I don't want you to take it as we're predestined that we're either going to heaven or going to hell. He lets us make that choice. But I do know, however, God knows who will trust in him and who will not. So predestination means determining our, our beforehand. He knows beforehand who will believe upon him and who will reject him. He still has the opportunity if a person would just ask Jesus to come into their heart, they would be saved. He says here in uh, the next verse that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted him in whom we also trusted after he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you have believed and were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, we think about a seal back in the day. If a king wanted to send a note to someone, they didn't really have an envelope, but they would fold it and he would drop uh, some uh, wax from a candle where they touched and he had a seal on his ring and he would put his ring in the seal of that uh, hot wax and that would mean that when it arrived it should still be sealed and if it were open it meant somebody had tampered with whatever message or whatever he was sending to someone else so it needed to be sealed and then on its arrival, still be sealed to show that no one had messed with it. And here he said also that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of his promise. God is the Father, creator of all things. Jesus is the one who died on the cross to take away our sins. The Holy Spirit is the one that lead God and direct us. But he's also the one that puts the seal upon us. 
because you don't have the Holy Spirit of God in you until you trust in Jesus Christ. And when you do, you now have the Holy Spirit living within you. And that's when he puts his seal of approval upon you that nothing can take that away ever again. And that's a real good thing to know. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase, uh, possession unto praise of his glory. I think about certain things, maybe in a different way, but we, we use sealing things in our food. A canned good is a can that's been sealed, and it can remain good to eat for many years after that because it's sealed. And can any air or anything get into it? We also have the process of putting something in a pressure cooker and in sealing it that way with a jar and a lid, and it gets sealed, and it can be good for a long, long time. I watched a show about Alaska. And a man the other day on the show said that he was eating some of his uh, uh, fish that he had put in a pressure cooker. And he said, it's been in there 10 years. And he opened it up and he tasted it. And he said, it's still good as if it were caught yesterday. So being sealed is like in a can or in a, a jar pressure cooker. When it's sealed, it's sealed until it's open. And then, if you will, turn with me into uh, Ephesians 4. We're going to start in verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until that day of redemption. We may be sealed until our day of redemption, but it's still possible if we don't do according to God's will or we disobey his commandments, we can grieve the Holy Spirit and, and make him upset or sad because we're not doing what we ought to be doing. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Notice here he said, He forgives us. Not for our sake, but for Christ's sake, because he knows Christ died to take away our sins. So it's for Christ's sake that he forgives us uh, when we've done something wrong. If you will go with me now over into 2 uh, Corinthians in chapter 1. We'll start in verse 20. For all the promises of God in him, ye are ye, and he in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now which he established with you in Christ and hath anointed us to God who have also sealed us and gave the earnest of the spirit of our hearts. There again, there's many places in the Bible where he refers to us that after we give our life to God, we are sealed. We're his and no one can remove them uh, from his hand. And I want to read a little about that over here in John chapter 10. And we're going to start in verse 27. He tells us here, he says, and this is Christ speaking, 
He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my father's hand. So once you're in God's hand, no man can pluck you out of your salvation or once you have been placed into God's hand by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nobody can pluck you. A man can shoot you, can kill you. He can do anything he wants to you, but he cannot touch your Holy Spirit that will dwell with God forever and forever. And here he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Uh, I'm gonna use this as an example one time. Me and a cousin of mine was driving down a dirt road and I don't remember why, but we pulled off the side of the road, got out, just kind of looking around. And there was a fence and there, uh, the fence kind of over behind it was a big old hill. And uh, I don't know what made me do it, but I just kind of nickered like a horse. And I went, yeah. And when I did that, about six horses come over the hill to come see who the other horse was. They heard a voice they recognized. It sounded like another horse. And they were coming to check it out. And uh, But the sheep know his voice, and they follow him. And no man can pluck them out of my father's hand. He says, my father, which give them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Isn't that a wonderful promise that once you give your life to God, you are then sealed with a stamp of approval. No man can pluck them out of the Father's hand. And he says, I and my Father are one. We call it the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But all three of them has a very unique and important thing uh, to do in life that we might know Christ as our Savior, that we might find salvation, that we have the assurance that nobody can pluck them out of our Father's hand. We are sealed. The, the Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct us. I'm telling you, folks, there's not hardly, in my opinion, any greater promise that God gives us than to tell us we are sealed and we are children of God and nothing can pluck them out of our Father's hand. I thank you and I appreciate you listening today and I hope you have a great week next week. God bless you.